Good day everyone, I'm Nurse Anne. Today, I will share a simple discussion about arterial blood gas, or ABG, to make it easy to understand and for fast interpretation during exams. So first, what is the importance of arterial blood gas? It determines the acid-base balance and oxygenation of the body. Basically, you really need to memorize the normal values for you to be able to know if it's acidosis or alkalosis. pH 7.35 to 7.45 HCO3 22 to 26 PCO2, it's 35 to 45. Note, our neutral point for pH is 7.40. This will be your basis if the given pH is normal. I will let you understand this when I give different examples. Again, you need to memorize this. For the pH, if it's lower than the normal value, it is acidosis. If it's higher than the normal value, it is alkalosis. For HCO3, it is the same with the pH. While for PCO2, if it's lower than the normal value, it is alkalosis. If it's higher than the normal value, it is acidosis. Don't worry, this is easy to remember. Just memorize the pH, then it is the same with the HCO3. So the PCO2 will be the opposite. Before we proceed to the different examples, please take note of this. This will help you a lot in interpreting the ABG. Note, pH is the basis of our interpretation. HCO3 is metabolic and PCO2 is respiratory. Let's now proceed to example number one. pH is 7.33, HCO3 is 30, PCO2 51. The pH is low, so it is acidosis. HCO3 is high, so it is alkalosis, metabolic. PCO2 is high, so it is acidosis, respiratory. Everything will be easy after identifying if it's acidosis or alkalosis. Since I told you that the pH is our basis of interpretation, so our answer will be acidosis. Then the next step is check the HCO3 or PCO2 if which one is the same with the pH. So in our first example, PCO2 is also acidosis, which we said earlier that it is a respiratory. Therefore, our answer will be respiratory acidosis. Example number two, pH is 7.35, HCO3 is 30, PCO2 is 51. The pH is within the normal range. So for us to identify if it's acidosis or alkalosis, we will use our neutral point, which is the 7.40 that I told you earlier. So we will consider the pH as acidosis because it is lower than the 7.40. Take note that we will only use this if it is within the normal range. HCO3 is high, so it is alkalosis. PCO2 is high, so it is acidosis. Again, first step is to identify the pH and it is acidosis. Next step, is to find which one is the same with the pH. And for this example, it is the PCO2 and it is considered respiratory. So the answer is respiratory acidosis. Example number three, pH is 7.33, HCO3 is 26, PCO2 51. pH is low, so it is acidosis. HCO3 is within the normal range, while PCO2 is high, so it is acidosis. 
pH is acidosis and it's the same with the PCO2 because the HCO3 is normal. So the answer is respiratory acidosis. If you notice, I make all the answer the same but with different value. This is for you to understand our next step which is to identify which one is compensated, partially compensated, and fully compensated. Let's start with the last example. Note, if either HCO3 or PCO2 have a normal value, it is considered uncompensated. So our complete answer in number 3 is uncompensated respiratory acidosis. Next is number 2. Note, if the pH is within the normal range, it is considered fully compensated. So our final answer in number 2 is fully compensated respiratory acidosis. Lastly, in number 1 example, if none of them is within the normal range, it is considered partially compensated. So our final answer in number 1 is partially compensated respiratory acidosis. Good to know? Hyperventilation, there is an increase in oxygen and a decrease in carbon dioxide that results to respiratory alkalosis. Hyperventilation is an early sign seen to patient with asthma. Next is hypoventilation. There is a decrease in oxygen and an increase in carbon dioxide that results to respiratory acidosis. Hypoventilation is a late sign seen to patient with asthma. Number three, metabolic alkalosis. It is an acid-base imbalance for patient experiencing severe vomiting. Metabolic acidosis. It is an acid-base imbalance for patient experiencing severe diarrhea. Lastly, respiratory acidosis, it is seen in patient with pulmonary emphysema. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want Nurse Anne to discuss something related in your nursing subjects, just feel free to leave a comment. See you in the next video!